DNA Video Productions is a full-service video producer with a fleet of drones, 4K, and HD cameras, as well as a crew of video operators. We handle commercial and residential real estate videos, as well as events for promotional purposes. We create book trailers, both live action and running stills, music videos, and website videos. We also film series shorts for online distribution and are currently involved in filming a political parody. We specialize in low-cost movie making. Call DNA Video Productions at 941-748-6865 or visit our website at www.dnavideoproductions.com. That's www.dnavideoproductions.com. Thank you. Our sponsor this month is Published, an affiliate of Village Voices. Published offers all author services from writing tips, critiques, manuscript evaluations, and editing, as well as tips to help you become published. If you prefer to self-publish, purchase the step-by-step -step book on publishing through Amazon, or purchase services a la carte, from formatting to creating custom covers or even tips to gather endorsements. The staff is headed by two professional writers. After your books are published, either trade paper, electronically, or both, purchase marketing tips, web services, book trailers, or turn your book into an audiobook. Publish provides all your writing, publishing, and marketing needs. So give them a call at 941-748-6865. Contact them online at dgould 497 at AOL.com or go to the website at www.publishedavillagevoices.webs.com. Good afternoon, this is Donna Lee on Culture Coast. The intro you just heard was by Al Musitano, and today we're interviewing Connie Buckler-Gill in the Village of the Arts at her Studio C. Connie is an artist. Hi Connie, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank you, Donna. <laughs> and what will, um, I'm going to start with you, as I do with most of my guests. Where did you get started in art? Well, I was uh, one of those kids in school that drew. I was, I, I was the kid in school that knew how to draw and complete all the art projects, you know, and I was the one the teacher chose for the art fairs in grade school. So, um, but I guess my real start came from my father. My father was an artist. Professionally? He had a few things on the side. He did a comic strip for a local newspaper and he sold some paintings. He was primarily an engineer, though. He was studying to be an engineer so he could raise the family. But he had a studio in the basement, and so we always had paints and brushes. And so you had an early introduction to yes. art. So you did it through school. That would be elementary and secondary. And did you go to college for art, or did you go for something else? I, I did. I went, I, when I moved to Florida, I got a, a job with a scenic studio. Uh, Hagenbeck Wallace, they do all the sets and artwork for the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus and the uh, Walt Disney Ice Shows. So, so I did what sets. kind of what kind of work would you have been doing to design sets or to create sets? Does it actual physical artwork, two dimensional, three dimensional? Well, there, was a, there was a designer. There was a designer that would design the um, the circus productions and the ice show productions, and then he would give us the designs, and we would create the designs. We had a sculptural team and a painting team. I was a part of the paint, painting team, sometimes the sculptural team. Uh, if there were props to be made for, say, the clowns, we would make uh, a lot of foam structures out of, uh, structures out of foam that get like a, a liquid rubber over them and then painted. 
so that uh, and help and, and you say you just moved here from Florida when you got that job. Um, did you move here because of the job, or did you move here for some other reason? I, and where from? I moved here from Minnesota. I was I was raised in Kentucky, <laughs> but I had lived in Minnesota for uh, six years. And you have neither accent, so how many years have you no, been here in Florida? I'm 25. That'll do it. Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> we erase accents. <laughs> right, right. Yes, that's true. Okay, so you moved here from Minnesota mm -hmm. after a stint in Kentucky, being born and raised in Kentucky. Right. And what brought you to Florida? The, the, the water. I wanted to live near the ocean. All your life? or No, I had just returned from a long trip to Europe. I, did, I biked and camped through Europe for about 10 months and I just wanted to, uh, I had spent time in Greece and camping on this little island uh, and fell in love with the Mediterranean and thought, well, Florida is the next best thing in the U.S. The Gulf. The Gulf, yeah. right? It's smooth. Very it's similar calm, to the swim. Mediterranean. So I decided to move here. And Good decision. <laughs> yes, it was, yes. All right, so you got here and what was the name of this company, Scenic? Hagenbeck Wallace. Hagenbeck Wallace, and they did scenic they, sets. They do all the uh, the sets and the artwork for the Walt Disney Ice Shows and the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. It was a nice artistic job. You get it to really was. I learned a lot. Creative. I learned so much, and then um, I mean, an excellent team of artists. Pretty amazing, really. And um, that's where I developed the desire to create. Um, Big things. I was going to bring that up. You do mostly murals. I'm a muralist. So, but the thing is, it's like I said, a designer would give me the design and say, this is what we want. And so I learned how to do that, but I wanted to create my own design. So I left there. I went to Ringling School of Art and Design. And when I finished there, I started my mural business. That was about, well, that was in 95. So um, that's what I've been doing. All right, and so, so where are your murals to be seen around town? They're mostly in uh, homes, private homes. In, on the interiors or exteriors? Well, I uh, interiors, some exterior. I do a lot of pool, like pool walls are popular here in Florida. You know the, you know the, the. Uh, How do you the find your clients? Are, well, when I when I finished Ringling, I got a job as a waitress in a Santa Fe steakhouse and I painted a, a southwestern mural for them and uh, an interior designer uh, came in as a client, as a customer, saw that mural and uh, st started using me as her muralist so and decorative have... arts person. So at that time, that was in 95, she was the beginning of me getting connected in that world, the interior design world. So, so have I have you, a few you have quite designers. a few. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what I was aiming for. So how did yeah. you, so she was your first interior designer that made you realize that that was the direction That's to go right. in to find the jobs and you're yeah. on their radar so they know that right. you have the kind of quality that they want and they can give you an idea and you can bring forth idea, you can bring forth little little draw ups of what you might do. So, so the client can say A or nay? Yes, something like that. They, uh, you know, it's, the, they, of course, are designing the space um, once they became, comp once they've got, become confident in my ability to enhance the space. I meet with the client. Sometimes the interior designer knows exactly what she wants, but more and more. Well, that was that was that was more the case in the first five years. But after you know eighteen years, they really have a good relationship with my designers, and they they want more and more you know my input and trust that I may know what the wall needs to be or what the room needs. But like, it's more of a collaborative effort. You okay, know, between, between the me owner, and the designer and the, and the and client. The owner, yes. and, and I have to say most of my work at this time is word of mouth. Um, Does it keep you busy? Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. I, in here, you're, what is your average size piece and what are you doing that on? Is that canvas? Canvas. Well, when I have the opportunity to work, um, do my own thing, and it's not a you know a mural commission or a decorative arts piece. I like to work with oils. 
I love oil painting. So if we have peacocks and the flowers, I the, the color, the, the bright color. colors, mm -hmm. the, the jewel tones. Yeah. Because I notice most of yours are in the deep jewel tone color range. You're not doing yeah. pastels, and that's that's right. that's oils because oils don't really do pastels. That's water. A lot of color yeah, goes to pastels. If you want to use a lot of white, you know, you can get pastel. But they're so rich and juicy coming out of the tube when they're. And all these colors. So. Now, when you do the murals in homes, those are acrylics. Those are acrylic. Um, the last in the last five years, though, I have been using more oils as well. I'll do my first layer in acrylics, and then apply the oils. It gives it you know, depth, a little and more depth, and uh, right on the walls. Wow, uh -huh. that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, um, and that also depends if, if the client will allow that because there's a little more of a you know an odor, a lingering odor for you know, a week or so with okay. oils. Now, your average size piece that you do here in your studio is what, six by four, 10 by eight? What, what do you use for your canvases most of the time? Yeah, five by five, six by four, seven by four, large as, large as possible. Whatever, the largest that will fit in my car. <laughs> really? So, yeah. so that's one of your limitations. It how is. big How big will it be? Well, I think <laughs> that one right there, I think, is what, five by four. Five by four. I have, well, I have a trailer as well. And so I have, I have, uh, I have these larger canvases with my trailer, but, you know, that's. Do you Not do, as spontaneous, because I don't haul my trailer around with me all the time. Right. Now, do you do shows? Not so much. I have I have done a couple, but my primary focus has been the mural business, and so there isn't a body of work, of course, because everything is in someone's home. Yeah, so you, it's not like you can take the wall down and bring yeah, it. So so I don't now really, that you're doing these, now that I have this studio, I'm kind of, I'm really excited to have wall space to hang all these paintings on that otherwise might be stacked up in my in, in, in my home. <laughs> because that's what I was doing. I was painting at home in my free time. And, and filling up your whole house with paintings? Yes. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, I need to get them out of there. So, Yeah, I could see a few of these being in a show and then having... Do you do prints from any of your work now? Have you gotten to that point yet? No, no, I haven't. I'm kind of, I've been resistant because, you know, I just think there's a real, real beauty to an original piece, the, the material itself, the texture, and, and the one-of-a-kind piece of art. And that's been something I've prided myself on. And when, I, when I have a client, I tell them, I don't do the same thing twice. This mural is yours. It's not going to be someone else's. I'm not going to do the same thing for someone else. Right. And that's important. Might have the same so, subject matter, but it won't be same the same thing. A lot of gardens, yeah, a lot of gardens, a lot of landscapes and seascapes and that kind of thing. But not, you know. All right, so you haven't done any prints and you don't really like that idea because it would be a replication and you don't want your work to be replicated. So you are sticking with the one and only original and you might pick up a subject matter and someone says, oh, I love that mural that you did at Mrs. Smith's uh -huh, house and right. I want one too. And it's like, I can do a mural for you, but we'll gear it more towards you. Exactly. That's what, exactly what I would say. Let's make it something personal for you. So what are your favorite colors rather than, yeah. and what matches this what particular room? And what kind of scenes have you been drawn to in your life and what really would... Well, so that's a large you part can, of your work. If you have any kind of space in you that you wanted, what would you want for right. you, not what so-and-so has? So we work on it. We work on it, and it comes about really easily. Because once a, you know, once a, a woman or a man, or the couple, the family, start to accept that, take that in, they get excited about that. And they'll spend some time talking about it and you know, come up with something that they really want. And I'll do sketches for them. The next step would be the sketches and sample boards of textures and colors and now before, then I bring that to them. Before and, that first job where you were doing the sets for Disney and, and for uh, the Ringling Brothers, did you were you drawn to murals at that point or was that what got you into the big, large ideas or 
I mean, because yeah, in exactly. school and college, it was smaller, right? Well, it was smaller in college, but um, before that, honestly, when I was in when I was in Europe, I uh, met a muralist, and uh, his work was so beautiful. And I remember, you know, thinking that's what I want to do. I, I I am in love with murals. I have one on my back fence, um, and oh, it's it's nice. really nice. But I I love murals. I. I Give the illusion that the wall goes somewhere else. Wow. Have you done any um, computer art um, where you actually do the things on the computer? No. Okay. I, I was just curious Not because I would love to explore that more. It's only been in the last uh, three years that I have um, gotten over my another my little resistance issue: the computer as a tool. Yes, it's it's an amazing tool. It's, it is it's a as long as we tool. don't as long as we don't let it occupy our time all the time. I, I see people get sucked in and and they live with the computer and start talking to the person sitting next to them on the computer. Right, <laughs> it's right. Like, Wait, that doesn't make sense. Yes, Can we I not know, pick up that funny. human connection? Yes, there's that. There is that. But in a way, it even I think it also the computer has. Enhance the human connection in a, way, and in a big way because I can, just recently saw an ad where they actually have a little girl painting on the computer. She's got a brush without paint on it, but she paints on the computer. She touches a color and oh then my. she does a paint stroke on the computer and on the screen, and it it's there. Oh it was an, I think they're coming to an amazing spot. Oh, I know, but. Boy, it takes I a know. lot of. Uh, it's it's really inc incredible. It takes, I think, both the left and the right brain. Well, I think painting takes is left and right brain, anyways, because there's a lot of technical aspects to painting, and uh, you know, a lot of perspective issues. And I don't think many you, people understand that the perspective and mm -hmm. and making sure that your horizon is. It, it, it's right. it's an ingrained thing. It's something that you learn very early on, mm -hmm. and yet. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's super important. Without it, you, your stuff looks Picasso-y. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It depends on what style you're yeah. working on. I know, you know, when I first started the mural, the mural work, um, it was when Sarasota was booming with the, um, the uh, say, you know, all these Italian, the Italian architecture, all this Mediterranean style that you see throughout Sarasota, all these gated communities. So you got a lot of the Trump, what is that called? A lot of the Trump Loy. Yeah. A lot of Trump Loy, uh, say, Tuscan vineyard scenes. And, you know, everyone wanted their home to look like a, a Tuscan villa. Yeah. You know, they wanted their walls to look old. They all look the they same, though. Look. It's so boring after a while. But it, I, it's kind of, the, 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 the area really got saturated with that. And I did so much of that. And I'm, I'm, that was wonderful. I developed so many skills and techniques, but um, I'm really happy that it's coming away from that. Now, yours, I'm not going to call it classic art because it's not like a picture, but it's, it is, it looks like a painting. Every one of your pieces look like paintings, not like pictures, which I always consider classical to be almost a still life replication of something. Uh -huh. And it's kind of hard to replicate mermaids. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have that right. model. That's <laughs> well, I don't actually. Those, you know, I mean, I've painted two mermaids and, and three, actually. That I don't, it's not like mermaids is a big subject, are a big subject. For but me. it has to do with water. But like someone water. asked for those. Someone requested two mermaids for their gallery uh, for a summer show. Okay, we've had a couple different mermaid shows here too, so yes, that, I understand where you're. So I saying. so I painted those, and there they are. <laughs> so you have mermaids. I have two for mermaids. the next for the next yeah. mermaid show, or when somebody decides or somebody that they decides want they want those. Unfortunately, they're very large, and you know I think most people that like mermaids want something smaller. I don't do smaller so well. Well, if they're really into the, the <laughs> they those might do well at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, maybe. You know, <laughs> they have a live mermaid there, by the way. Oh, they do. Yeah, my granddaughter's totally in love with her. She didn't want to oh. leave because she wanted to stay with the mermaid. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, and you also love doing the peacocks. What else are your, what else, what other subjects do you really, are you drawn to? Well, the, I, I do enjoy the peacocks. It's mainly a color issue, though. The turquoise and Same blues with parrots. and the oranges and such. You know, but the peacock has the colors. That's what I'm really drawn to about the peacock. So, what am I drawn to? Oh, it starts with color, and then. Well, the flowers. I like oversized, large flowers. I like the intricate design. When and you go inside the you flower. also have geographic. Is that how you would call what you this would call is, this step? I love to travel, and um, this is a wall of. Uh, this is my interfaith wall. There are photographs from the Alhambra in Granada, Spain. There are cathedrals um, in. In Florence, and now these are photographs. Those are photographs. So, are you going to muralize those photographs? Somehow? I have used my photographs in my travels so much um, in in murals. That's where I get a lot of a lot of my ideas from. Um, but so you travel the world, and I wouldn't say no. These aren't going to be muralized. These are. I think I'm going to actually because I do enjoy traveling. I think I'm going to just get into the photography a little bit more. Um, because it's fun, and uh, does it take as much work? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's nothing like. Are you kidding? Oh my goodness! Nothing like you know painting a full wall to look like, say, you know, the interior of that cathedral there. Taking a picture of it is is not less work, but sometimes you can capture little, uh, little you know, little aspects of the design of that say the Alhambra, that some people may not have noticed, like the, the, the close-up of that wall in the far left corner is a wall in the Alhambra. I mean, in Islam, there is no imagery. It's, it's all uh, the language. So the, entire, the interior of the Alhambra is carved language. And it's just beautiful. The so it ends up becoming beautiful. art. The language becomes art because the, they're done... They're done it's more like calligraphy, isn't it's it? It's like a calligraphy, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it comes out very beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Now you have some websites where people can actually see your work that you have here at Studio C and some of the work that you've done in homes. Mm-hmm. Your Mostly. murals, mm-hmm. yes. pictures of that, those are all on your website, which yes. would be... ConnieBucklerGill.com That would be ConnieBucklerGill.com Now... There's no hyphen between, for your website, it's Connie, uh-huh. C-O-N-N-I-E, Buckler, B-U-C-K-L, I can talk, sorry, it is www.connie, C-O-N-N-I-E, Buckler, B-U-C-K-L-E-R, Gil, Gil G-I-L-L, dot com. That's right. Okay, and they can see your work there. Now, do you have a Facebook page? Um, I do, I do. Uh, Is I your work? Do you put your work on your Facebook page? At I, all? I plan on it, but it's not really updated so much. I'm all right, you need to give, get it. yourself one of those Facebook pages that's mm-hmm. just your work on Studio C. You uh, can do that, right? Right. Well, I do have a a uh, Connie Connie Buckler Creative Atmospheres Facebook page. I need to. Keep work your work on, on it. On it. It's, I'm not keeping <laughs> Get it up, up there. Facebook. I don't keep up with Facebook, right? I, I don't either, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm finding it's it's good. I mean, it's a good it, it's a good way to communicate. It's a good resource as mm-hmm. long as you're not telling everybody what you had for lunch today. That's right. <laughs> the, the, the unimportant stuff. I wish people would stop that nonsense. <laughs> Somebody's coming home from work. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> but yes, um, as a as a tool. As a business tool, it can be good. I think it'd be a, it can be a great business, business tool. And for one thing, it's, uh, it's, um, it's so workable. You know, it's so easily workable. And for, as for, for, for people like myself, that I'm not, I'm not incredibly com- computer savvy. So I found that downloading pictures on Facebook is really quite simple. And free. And free. <laughs> Let's not forget that. And, and free. free. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And so many people are using it, and I found when I do download a picture, I get immediate responses. It's amazing. I, I've so, met a few a few of the artists that I have interviewed. I've met because of their 
uploads to Facebook and I they ended up on my page because they were friends of a friend and I'm like wow that is just incredible and I contact them because they're so amazing so yeah that putting your photos up there is an excellent tool for business now um, what are your plans for the future you just you just moved into the village of the art this year and opened studio C what are your future plans do have you got anything in concrete that you know you want to head towards? You just mentioned the photographs. Well, uh, I am, um, no, I, right now I've been here, well this is my, I've been here three months and um, I'm just really still enjoying the, the uh, rekindling of my creative spirit here. And being, in the, having in the time place. and space to do what you want to do. Yes. And the people in, in the Village of the Arts, you know, I, I love this community already in just a short time. The it's energy a fantastic is fantastic community. I, the support I felt from this community just in the first two weeks was overwhelming. <laughs> and, and, and it's still, and it continues. So right now I'm just kind of sitting back and doing my work and getting to know the people here and just seeing, you know, how I can possibly be. Um, be a part of this and be a part of the energy of, of uh, the, the vision of what this can become. The circle of energy so yes. that we all create our own yes. and pass it on and it comes back uh -huh. tenfold. That's right. Because I think this, I think the people here, the, the, the artists here, the uh, cafe owners, the, you know, there's Hector who is so wonderful across the street. He works on websites for all of us. And he's and, a muralist too. And he's a muralist as well. I mean, there's just there's just so much good, good, honest, uh, intelligent, creative energy here. And I really feel like this is a good time to be here. I think Bradenton is growing. I think there are a lot of good people working it for the right reasons to take it in a good direction and doing keeping its integrity. I, I'm just so excited about it. I'm glad to hear all yeah, that. Yeah, it's really been one of the most exciting shifts in my work in many years. Well, we are glad to have you here, and Thank I'm you. glad that you <laughs> agreed to be on Culture Coast, and I hope we see much more of you in the future. Well, thank you, Donna. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Nightmares, frightful visions during the night, causing terror and loss of sleep. Daymares, frightful visions during the day, causing fear and paranoia. Gothmares, gothic visions that can happen anytime, causing horror and disgust, but sometimes they offer answers. Read Gothmares if you dare. <laughs> Gothmare is a young adult novel by Al Musitano, available on Amazon and fine bookstores everywhere. Village of the Arts, the largest artist colony in the state of Florida, located on 42 acres, includes artists, homes, galleries, gardens, and restaurants featuring handcrafted gifts, fine art sculptures, painting, photography, Enviro art, healing arts, books, mystics, and musical variety. A few of the galleries are unique in their offerings. Village Voices specializes in books and art created exclusively by Florida residents. The Dancing Crane Gallery offers fine art, custom jewelry, and unique innovative art. The Village Mystic offers all things metaphysical, meditation, massage, mediums, aromatherapy, psychic, shamans, reiki healing, and the gem mine where you can mine for your own personal treasure. Yoga Arts offers classes or one-on-one -on -one coaching. Musicians and bands can be found throughout the area. Many of the artists and musicians offer classes. Restaurants and bakeries provide respite for the weary and magic for the foodies. Visit during the first Art Friday Art Walk and stroll through the shops and galleries enjoying free appetizers, wine, music, and demonstrations. For hours and information, please visit the website at www.villageofthearts.com.